This is One on One. We have the greatest educators, the best educators. This is Teacher Appreciation Week. It's like every week that should be. Let me introduce you to Justin Montgomery, a great teacher, a math teacher at Delaware Valley Regional High School in Frenchtown, New Jersey. For those who do not know where Frenchtown is, where is it? Uh, it's about southeast of Allentown, Pennsylvania, of Billy Joel fame. It's a real sweet town east of the Delaware River. Look at you trying to work Billy Joel in that conversation. Um, hey, listen, let's talk about this whole initiative, um, the Integrated Plan for Academic Development, iPad, right, for short. <laughs> this is part of our Classroom Close-Up initiative that we do in cooperation with our partners at the NJEA. You can check out Classroom Close-Up every week on NJTV, the public television station here in New Jersey. Um, we're about to see a piece of video that talks about these young people. They love this iPad, right? That's right. How's it making a difference? It really puts the students at the center of the learning. Yeah? It's not the technology, it's the students? It's always been the students. The technology is just another tool. All right, we're going to see if this video proves you out, right? Because everything I hear, if you, this is your fifth year? That's right. Everyone says you're a great teacher. We're about to prove it in this video from Classroom Close Up. Let's take a look and we'll talk to this great math teacher right after this, Justin. We're still seeing books in schools, but more and more the content of books are on these. And if you think the tablets of today are simply a replacement for textbooks, well, think again. With the iPad, everything has changed. You just break the walls out of the classroom. There's been an increase in student reading. Reading on the iPad is considered cool. With the iPads, the students do a lot more of the learning on their own. Instantaneous access to that data is a motivator for some students because it's actually going on somewhere in the world and it's relevant. And those are just a few of the reasons that Delaware Valley Regional High School initiated the Integrated Plan for Academic Development. The iPad program was started this September. The pilots were last year, and as of September, every teacher, every student, and every paraprofessional in the classroom has an iPad to use. Use them how, you ask? Let's begin in Mr. Montgomery's Honors Algebra 2 class. You guys all look very nice today. <laughs> I'm going to use an app called AirSketch that allows students to write down their work, and then through the local internet here, I'm able to project it up on the screen. So Today in the science classrooms around the corner, iPads are being used to survey student progress. Well, at this point in time, we're studying heat and reactions. And the first few questions are multiple choice. In order to determine how effective the lesson was in their learning the concepts I wanted them to learn, we're going to be doing an online quiz. How are mass and temperature related? I've had kids make eye movies. With an iMovie, the students can take a picture of whatever it is they want to show or present. That could be themselves, that could be a cooking demonstration, and then they can edit it down, they can add music, they can add a voiceover, they can add captions. It will keep them going and learning for a week on their own, independently. And then I send that link to the parents, and they can see what their sons and daughters are do have been doing in class. It's not just a matter of less paper, but it's a matter of in my opinion, more interesting activities to do. Para cada pregunta, escribe una respuesta en español y añade una foto. Like today's assignment, they'll be looking at newspapers in Argentina and telling me what the weather is and what's going on in Argentina right now. I was looking up Argentina's currency, and uh, they use pesos, so I'm looking for a picture now so I can put in my uh, um, presentation. It's not an easy undertaking. We knew that from the beginning. We researched this project. We went to another school to look at what they were doing. And we realized that we had to have a lot in place before we began effectively in September. But we have an obligation to prepare students for a career in college. And why not give our students the tools that they need to be successful? So that's really the driving force. That is great. It absolutely is. You have so many different subjects, so many different teachers that are into this. Um, and you were telling me during the tape piece that we're watching, by the way, thank you to our partners at the New Jersey Education Association for producing that terrific piece. You were telling me first that the students love that package. They do. Why? It allows them to see their work on the screen. It allows them to interact with their classmates, projects, 
with their device. It's just another way of commu increasing the communication and putting them at the helm of their own learning. What about the educators, your colleagues, when they see that? They get excited, too, because instead of them delivering all the content, the students are creating it themselves. You know, it's so interesting. As I was getting ready for the show, I'm thinking, wait a minute, this iPad. Because I watch our sons who are 8 and 10, and I worry with the iPad that it just becomes a toy, that they're playing with it, and, and they're playing some game with it. And I'm not saying there's no value in that, but that's not educational in the sense that we just saw. And so how do you monitor and where's the quality control in terms of where the toy ends and the tool begins? It starts with the teacher having the right idea of how to use the tool in the classroom and by effectively modeling it for students to show them that it's an educational device, then students can get their minds wrapped around it. And then there's a technological aspect to it too where teachers can lock down students to particular apps, to particular websites to also help curb the distraction. For, for example, let's talk about how you use it. Give us a concrete example of how you are using this technology to do something that if you didn't have would be much more challenging to teach. One thing that I really like about the device is how much time it saves me in the classroom so I could get more to the learning and less on the pushing papers, for example. But students complete their homework on the iPad. That's where their textbook is anyway. And as soon as I come into class with the students, I could point out problems that are going to be key to learning the previous lesson and linking to that day's lesson. Their work, then, I could have them projected up on the board right away, and they don't have to recreate it by going up to, say, a whiteboard. And also, from their seat, they could use a pointer and lead their students step by step with the visual and what they're saying about their own work. How challenging is it to have other teachers trained to use this iPad? That's where I've been involved the most, and it's one of my favorite parts, teaching teachers and students. And so professional development workshops after school, during the summer, during professional development in-service days. So it requires a lot of dedicated effort, but as long as the teachers are willing, then you could do such a program. You were telling me during uh, the time we were watching um, the tape piece, that some of the stuff we we're seeing there, I'm not gonna say is obsolete, but you're even using, using new technology that goes beyond that. What you saw in the video clip was an AirSketch app, which is limited. You could kind of write your work there. It's like a whiteboard on the iPad that you could then project through the, the Wi-Fi. But now we use Air Server, which you press a button and then anything on that student's iPad, for the most part, can now be displayed on the screen. So it doesn't matter what app they're using. It could be a note-taking app. It could be their PowerPoint presentation. And then they don't have to go up to the corner of the room where the, they could plug in. Mm -hmm. And so it's more uh, accessible for the student to share their work without having to like, go through all the bundles of cords. When you decided to go into teaching, to become a math teacher. Is this what you had in mind? It is not. I just want to be a role model, and I like working with kids and teaching. Uh, this has been an exciting development for me. This is the future. It's the right time to be in education. It's exciting. I think this is the future. Could you imagine teaching what you are teaching without this technology? I have for several years, and I'm already two weeks ahead of where I was just this past year, so I don't want to give it up. It's good stuff. Keep it up. Your students are benefiting, as are your colleagues. Uh, Justin Montgomery, math teacher, Delaware Valley Regional High School in Frenchtown, New Jersey, which is very close to Allentown, Pennsylvania, made famous by the great Billy Joel. Right? That's right. You know that song? I do. It's before your time. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Thank you very much. We'll be right back right after this. You really remember it? One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, activists in cooperation with the American Medicine Chest Challenge, Choose New Jersey, NJIT, Health Republic Insurance of New Jersey, Berkeley College, and by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, 
serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.